Welcome, welcome everybody, it's the Gentleman J. Brad here. With all of the hype surrounding the upcoming release of Cyberpunk 2077, I thought I would take it upon myself to introduce you folks to other forms of punk genres that you might not know about. Punk genres are a categorization of modern fictional works, so-called because they usually focus on alienation and dysfunctions within society, and often tend to be rather pulpy in nature. The granddaddy of all punk genres is cyberpunk, which is often categorized by a combination of low life and high tech, made especially popular during the 80s and 90s. In second place in terms of popularity, you have what is known as steampunk, which is a form of speculative fiction wherein technology retains the need for Victorian and early industrial revolution era fuel sources. However, manages to continue in terms of mechanical advancement. You've probably seen many examples of both of these in the worlds of film, television, animation, and video games, but I bet you haven't heard of the 14 ones that I've got lined up right now. So without further ado, I introduce you to 14 punk genres you might not have heard about. Dieselpunk is a form of speculative science fiction that functions very similarly to steampunk, except replacing steam with fossil fuels. It's broadly inspired by the wartime periods of America and Europe, and as such, you'll see things such as flying aces and bomber planes, spunky mechanics tinkering away at their trains, automobiles, and motorcycles, or maybe a Nazi scientist working on some sort of futurized military technology, like tanks, zeppelins, or submarines maybe even a mech or two. Just make sure you have at least one high-ranking military officer with an eye patch, because we won't be coming back till the war is over there. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. On the flip side of diesel punk is deco punk, where the aesthetics focus less on the world wars and more on the Roaring Twenties and Depression era. Taking its name from the Art Deco style used to design many of the new skyscrapers being built in places like New York and Chicago, Deco Punk is much less about the technology and more about the overall zeitgeist of the time. You'll be hearing tons of jazz, swing, and big band music. You'll be seeing a lot of vaudeville and cabaret shows, maybe even a classical movie with a bendy cartoon attached. And of course, you'll be seeing many stories focusing on things such as decadence of the wealthy versus the struggles of the working class, organized crime, and other hallmarks of the lost generation. Fast forward a decade or two, and you'll find yourself in the world of Adam Punk. Hopping from one world conflict to another, Adam Punk borrows its imagery from the Cold War era of the late 40s to mid 60s, with the main focus on the potentiality of nuclear war, hence the name, and its consequences such as nuclear holocaust. This period was known both for the saber rattling and espionage between America and the Soviet Union, culminating in the space race, and the consumer lifestyle deliberately marketed toward the post-war nuclear family, living in quaint suburban neighborhoods. 50s and 60s technology can be summed up best with the blank of tomorrow, and so you'll find a lot of optimistic depictions of futuristic consumer goods. If the setting takes place after said nuclear holocaust, expect to see such items used as decorations everywhere, and occasionally even space aliens or zombies often serving as stand-ins for the fears of communist infiltration and desegregation. Far into a completely different region of space, you can find what is known as ray punk. A bit more on the esoteric and pop art side, Raypunk is a form of sci-fi that incorporates more mythical and fantastical vibes than just straight-up hard sci-fi. 
Think intergalactic knights, alien emperors, and green-skinned princesses. Sometimes, though, it's simply a vision of the future that incorporates technology that is not just super advanced, but also more alien in its design. This type of psychedelic sci-fi was made popular in the 60s and 70s, right around the time when cinema was opening up to countercultural views on society. So expect to see lots of themes centered around sexuality, racism, and anti-imperialism. One of the most common themes within the history of sci-fi is the idea of mankind playing God, dating all the way back to its early days with stories like Frankenstein and the island of Dr. Moreau. But technology has evolved, and with a bit of mad science, so can the rest of humanity. Biopunk is dedicated entirely to that, with the process of genetic engineering as its centerpiece. What's great about this particular punk genre is that its namesake is more about its primary plot device, so it's much less limited in terms of what time period you can have it take place in. Though, it's probably best not to have it so far into the future that it ventures into the territory of transhumanist cyberpunk, thereby making it feel almost ubiquitous. Instead, biopunk serves as a means to use topics like cloning, pandemics, and designer babies to explore deeper topics such as ethics, humanism, and identity. Now, you might think that machines running like clockwork sounds like a no-brainer. But how about things that run on clockwork? This is an idea that moves clockpunk, a historical punk genre based within the Renaissance, sometimes creeping into the Baroque and Regency eras. It was an age of art and discovery, swashbuckling pirates and masquerade balls, after the medieval years but before the Industrial Revolution. You had all of the great Italian painters, German composers, French philosophers, and Spanish explorers. But maybe they could have used some cool Da Vinci-inspired technology to help them out a bit. This is where clock punk comes in. Technology is very physics-based, so prepare for lots of trebuchets, flintlock pistols, and mechanical birds. While these types of stories don't tend to have heavy themes too often, they usually make up for it by being more lighthearted and heroic in the traditional sense. Taking things further east, silk punk is based on oriental cultures of China, Japan, Korea, etc. And so it incorporates themes based around Asian attitudes towards family, nature, honor, spirituality, and warfare. Technology won't just be created through metallurgy, however, but also natural materials like paper, wood, and of course, silk. A hallmark example being the ninja kite. This leads to a number of silk punk stories tackling the subject matter of whether technological advancement and modernity encroaches upon or displaces tradition and local culture. Rolling back the clock way, way, way back, stone punk is about as bare bones as you can get, so long as you put those bones to good use. This type of setting uses caveman era technology, which makes for good survival stories about migrating before winter sets in, warring against other tribes, and keeping your clan safe from saber-toothed tigers, dinosaurs, and who knows what else. Remember, you don't have to be that historically accurate. Everyone knows that civilizations, real or imagined, have to start somewhere. In fact, feel free to have clashes between civilizations at differing points in their technological or even evolutionary development. Elf 
Cyberpunk is a punk genre that falls within a broad category of what is known as urban fantasy, i.e. fantasy stories that take place within, well, urban environments. These can be modern cities or slightly older ones, but the main point is that the magical elements and setting must clearly be well spaced apart. Setting the story in modern times, turn of the century, or even some time in the future is usually the safest bet. Elf punk in particular is more specific in that the crux of the plot centers around ancient and mythological beings like elves, gods, fairies, etc. not just existing within our world, but actively interacting, commingling, and assimilating into it, with or without the average human's knowledge. These types of stories tend to err on the side of crime fiction and social commentary, with the mythological beings in question representing various marginalized groups such as immigrants, racial, religious, and sexual minorities, or even just rebellious subcultures or gangs, which is why you'll often have fictional towns acting as safe havens and ethnic enclaves for them. Where elf punk focused on bringing fantasy worlds into the modern day, myth punk brings modernity into the fantasy worlds of the past. Don't go in thinking it'll play out like the stories your parents used to read to you at night. Characters are often morally gray, and the themes and subject matter might be ones that would have rarely appeared in the literature of antiquity. Myth punk is almost more of a mood or a feeling rather than just an outright aesthetic, and is mostly composed of otherwise typical folklore and fairy tale tropes reimagined and retold in modern and postmodern ways. Some of them are a lot darker in tone, or they have nonlinear plots. Making myth punk the only one on this list that gets its categorization based on the literary elements and styles used when writing its stories, rather than the physical characteristics of the world building itself. Goth punk is a midnight dreary version of cyberpunk. Not a whole heck of a lot of bright neon colors to be found here. Instead, cities are really dark and spooky, likely inspired by the types of backdrops you'd see in French noir or German expressionist films. Unlike cyberpunk, which tends to be strictly sci-fi, goth punk is more likely to involve one or two fantastical or horror elements, like vampires and demons, with the disconnect between reality and insanity tying into broader themes of anti-authoritarianism and crises of faith. Since this is more of a palette swap to cyberpunk in many respects, you can still find things like corrupt governments, tyrannical corporations, super-powered gang warfare, and lots of trench coats and leather pants. It just so happens that the architecture is reminiscent of Tim Burton and H.R. Giger. Just like the moon has a dark side, so do the characters you're bound to see. So expect a lot of Byronic heroes with tortured pasts villainous Lotharios, and copious amounts of anime Catholicism. Get your wagon ready, because it's time to saddle up. We're heading out to the wild, wild west. Cattle punk refers to a version of steampunk that specifically focuses on the American West and as a result, has many of the same tropes and trappings as most Westerns do, albeit with more advanced technology. Whether it takes inspiration from more traditional Westerns or from more of a spaghetti Western vibe, the main focus is building from the typical Western genre into something sci-fi or fantasy. This genre has a couple of cousins in Space Westerns, which is a sci-fi story taking place in space that just happens to behave like a western without the clear motifs, and Weird West, which are paranormal westerns, and the three often bleed into each other. Ho 
hope you don't like sand in your shoes because this is sandal punk a punk genre focusing on the civilizations of mediterranean and middle eastern antiquity spanning from rome to greece egypt to persia or even somewhere completely made up sandal punk makes up for its lack of technology with grand and epic scale befitting the gods speaking of gods Expect to see some appear every now and again to give your characters a hard time. Or maybe they'll have your characters do battle with a massive beast, embark on a magical journey across the sea, or fight in a large coliseum like arena. In any case, make sure you fight in the shade. If you're wondering what it is that sets this subgenre of sci-fi apart from the others, it's right there in the name. Steelpunk is a name for an aesthetic that we're all familiar with, but can't quite place a name to. A form of dystopian and or post-apocalyptic sci-fi that's advanced enough to clearly be the future, but not enough to be classified as cyberpunk. Rather, instead of imbibing the feeling of a more techno-EDM version of the future, Steelpunk is much more heavy metal and grunge. In fact, many of the most popular steelpunk works came out of films and comic books from the 80s and 90s. Settings for steelpunk take on two primary forms. The first is within dingy gray metropolis, and the second within desert wastelands. It's no surprise that many steelpunk stories take place within fictionalized versions of New York and Los Angeles respectively. These types of stories are very likely to have competing factions of police states, biker gangs, and mutant marauders. And out of all the punk genres on this list, it's the most likely to be inspired by punk fashion and music. So there you have it folks, my 14 punk genres that you might have never heard of before. There were a couple of honorable mentions, but unfortunately I didn't have many good materials to work with for them such as Afropunk, which, to the best of my knowledge, only has one movie in Black Panther, Nanopunk, I'm not entirely sure what it is, Tesla Punk, which is just steampunk with electricity, and then there's Dread Punk, which is really just a newfangled way of saying gothic horror. Let me know in the comments which ones you think were the most interesting. What are some of your favorite fictional works that have to do with each genre? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, this is the Gentleman J. Brad signing out.